as a concept, there's only one mind, which is not loads of separate minds inside of separate bodies. There's one mind, and inside of that mind is projected the idea that there could be separate bodies, and that each of those separate bodies was like a separate perspective on oneness. So it's taking oneness and splitting it into loads of separate bits, so that loads of separate bits can look at oneness. And that's essentially what the concept of this whole world that we've discovered in such complex detail. But we're just looking at the separateness at this point in time as a, as a human race. Mostly what we do in order to create the whole ability to end up with an Apple Mac that you can figure out so much stuff that you can have an internet and all the rest and realise, oh yeah, oneness is what we really need to figure out, guys. But that's only lately that we're really starting to realise, wow, we better figure out global oneness and universal oneness really fast or we'll blow on ourselves to smithereens. So, there's only one mind. And apart from that, what we're living in is a divisive ego and there's only one ego. So that ego runs the operating system that believes there's a body. And that ego system believes it must defend the body and keep the whole world alive because its life, its existence depends on us living in this world so that mind can keep this world having some sort of purpose. Because ultimately this world doesn't really have a purpose. Scary. Mm. Is a bit. So it just means that, like, the, the bright side of it means all the stuff that you take seriously about yourself, all the guilt, all the fear, all of that stuff, you can just drop it. All of it. All of it. It's utterly meaningless. And the only thing you're left with then is still the thing you're left with if you didn't know this concept. But the only thing you're left with then is what do you believe in? And learn to construct a belief that is harmless. 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 And that is giving of what's real and never bothering to pander to what's false ever so the question of the Bob Dylan selling your soul thing like ludicrous thing to do however if you have got a whole belief system constructed in which it's oneness and you're not having to rip anyone else off and nobody's having to lose so that you can be where you are that there's not loads of people beneath you in the pyramid if you can be real with your existence like that, then you can still be Bob Dylan. Or Bob Dylan can get his head around the fact that his mind isn't in his head and there's only one mind. And he can begin to, you know, he can play a large role in this concept of how oneness. to think that they're all stuck here 
because this is what's real. And at the point where the planet's getting blown to smithereens and everyone's just suffering and all that kind of thing, that ain't really going to be something that they're involved He's brought them down here. He's stuck. He's seen the lives of this thing. He's played in everything. He's seen himself in everything. But what you see in himself is that he is the extension of God. Down here in a place where everyone's lost. He's just gone. This is duality in the place before that. <clears throat> so roughly we've heard Christ Jesus talking about my Father is in heaven and I'm the Son of God. And we're all the Son of God, but you guys don't realise it. Right? Basically. Here's the, here's the way what I did. What I did is I learned to see everyone as myself and to see the best for everybody. Because unless I give the best to everybody, then somebody's left out. So what this book is saying, roughly, or between the two books, what they're saying is about the time to do this, uh, the drama of this world is taken with Jesus Christ and they've <coughs> tried him in front of the Jews and the Jews have done an underhanded trick to get the Romans to put him on the cross. He's done his time up on the cross and the whole world seems to go around like the trip is pretty in the dream. The stuff we find pretty fucking majorly miraculous happens. But we don't get a picture in the Bible or in the New Testament or anywhere. We don't get a picture of what was going on for Christ during that whole episode. Apparently what was going on for Christ in that whole episode is he's just seen, you know, it's his final, in that lifetime, it's his final initiation into fully knowing himself that he doesn't take this world seriously. But he's... Just the last little bit you float. 
last little bit, your consciousness itself is melted into the bones. Like that mushroom trip I was telling you about the other day, you're back in this day. Really walking out of duality back into unity. But uh, this world is insane, so everything we've learned is insane. Everything we've learned is in opposition to the truth. Everything claims to be the truth, but it's actually all the opposite. Essentially, which wouldn't have been so evident thousands of years ago, but now with the laws and <coughs> the laws in the modern age are so stupid like it's evident that laws of this world are totally against this. What they call the laws of God or anything. But the law of God is only that love ever extends itself. And it is everywhere. It extends itself within itself. And that that's kind of what our that's what we do. We, we extend love within love so that love continues to ever expand within itself. The fact is, is that Those by us types, just kind of like, can't have a job. We just can't really do it.